This is a video about communicating with people who have moderate to severe depression. In this particular video, we shall be focusing on empathy. Before continuing with this video, it may be necessary to contact your local mental health team or crisis team, depending on your circumstances. There's also some links below to help you learn some expert advice about what we'll be talking about today. Over the last seven years, I've worked as a mental health nurse in various speciality roles. I also suffer with mental health myself as I have diagnosis of bipolar 2, which is predominantly dominated by depression. It's very difficult to know what to say when somebody is suffering with depression, and sometimes, born out of love, we may say things that are actually detrimental and can have devastating effects, especially for people suffering with self-harm or suicidal ideation. I would like to talk about a few of these things and offer you some evidence-based alternatives which can help bring you closer rather than polarise and possibly deteriorate a situation. Over my career I've seen some common types of communication coming from both nurses, families, friends and support networks and one of the most common is using comparisons. A common version is, I've been there, I know how it feels. Uh, this is really detrimental. Um, whatever symptom profile the person is experiencing, this is generally going to exacerbate those. Now that's very dangerous if somebody has uh, self-harming or uh, suicidal ideation. There is a way around this and that's actually trying to bridge the gap with saying something like, I've had some experience and can empathise to a degree, but I can't empathise to the level at which you're feeling depressed and I want to. So if you want to talk to me about anything, please do. Now this gives them the validation that you believe that they're suffering. And that's really important and that is the first bridge in order to opening more detailed um, forms of communication. Something else that's really common and again, it, it comes out of love, it's almost instinctual, anything along the lines of the pull your socks up approach to communication. Get out of bed, why don't you get up and run around the block. Um, there's a reason why they don't do these things and that's because they're suffering from depression. It's much more helpful to let them know that you're there, give them space, use open-ended dialogue and allow them to instigate and when they do, actively listen process what they're saying, reflect it back to them and that way you start moving forward and they may begin to open up. Anything aggressive like that, like pull up your socks approach, you're going to put a bit of a wall up there. To summarise, we're looking to provide validation. We need to say that Although we have experience of negative thoughts and feelings, we don't quite have the experience they do, but we would like to help and we'd like to know more. We also need to know that we're not passing any judgement at all, and that comes with validation. That's one of the bonuses that you get. Should you manage to open up good lines of communication, let them know that it's up to them how they're going to interact with us. Um, whether they want to sit quietly with us and watch a movie, let them do the talking and especially if they're talking use active listening really listen to what they're saying reflect it back to them start a dialogue that's positive all the advice given in this video is evidence-based and there are links provided below i really think it's helpful to read about these and symptoms in general it can really make a big difference if there's anything you'd like us to talk about um, or make a video about or anything about this video that you'd comment on, please leave comments, uh, we'll, we will definitely reply. You will find your local sources of mental health through your GP is the easiest way. Family therapies, group therapies, single therapies, these are really good tools and they will teach communication styles. With that said, uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.